Are you a fan of Moon Knight? Then you should read Moon Knight, The Midnight Mission by Jed McKay. What is up? I am the G.I. Joel, and I love comic books so much, I left a full-time job to open a comic book shop and make content for all of you full-time. And in this episode of You Should Read This, we're going to be talking about the newest installment in the epic story of Moon Knight. Whether you're a longtime fan of Moon Knight, or you want to get to know his character better before the new Disney Plus series, this current run is a definite must-read. This has been a really great exploration of both Moon Knight and Mark Spector as a character. You really get to know him, his motivations, and get a lot of different interesting aspects of his character kind of delved into. But let's go ahead and get into the synopsis and review of this great series. Moon Knight is back to protecting the streets of New York. After the events of Khonshu, which was an Avengers story arc that you don't need to read, uh, but this series does take place immediately following that event, Mark is no longer serving Khonshu. He's decided, though, to start a mission, the Midnight Mission, in order to protect the travelers of night. So basically, he is not serving Khonshu directly, but he is still doing the things that he was doing for Khonshu, protecting those that travel at night, protecting those that travel under the protection of the moon. And he's not doing it for Conchu, so why exactly is Mark continuing this mission? Well, during this, Mark is kind of taking care of the creepy crawlies of the Marvel Universe as it would, from vampires to, you know, the Spider-Man villain known as Vermin, mind-controlling janitors, and everything else that kind of goes bump in the night, Moon Knight is there to bump back. And his mission, in a lot of ways, is kind of like the Ghostbusters mansion, you know, like people come to him, you know, concerned citizens from the neighborhood, they come to Moon Knight, and they ask him for help, they say, you know, there's these terrible things happening in my apartment building, and there's these terrible things happening on my street, and Moon Knight goes and does whatever he can to help them. And all of this is set kind of juxtaposition to Mark attending therapy to work through his many, many issues. And one of the interesting things about these therapy sessions is that he is always in his Mr. Knight outfit. He goes as Mark, but always behind the mask, which I think is really important. And, you know, that idea, of course, is not lost on his therapist, but it does really show kind of where Mark is at in his psyche. He really has just retreated fully into the Moon Knight identity. Moon Knight also has some new friends and allies helping him along the way, specifically Reese, who is a person that he rescued, who was unfortunately turned into a vampire against her will. But she has come to the mission and she helps Moon Knight with his day to day. And, you know, he does what he can to protect her and allows her to live, even though she is a vampire and it technically is his responsibility to destroy her. We also meet other characters like Dr. Bader, who is also a servant of Khonshu, but I'm not going to get too much into that because spoilers, a lot of other new characters that kind of come along to help out Moon Knight on his mission to protect this part of the city. And this run has really taken Moon Knight back to his roots in a way. You know, most Moon Knight stories either focus on his work as a vigilante or focus kind of on his mental health issues mixed in with like elements of the supernatural. And this series does all of that kind of at once. He is in the streets stopping supernatural villains for the most part, but there is this even greater threat kind of pulling the strings from the shadows that were kind of hinted at since the beginning of the first issue. And one of the th interesting things that I've noticed about this series is that there is no Jake Lockley, there is no Stephen Grant, and there really isn't any Mark. It's pretty much always Moon Knight or the Mr. Knight, you know, kind of personalities and personas. You know, do I think Jake Lockley and Stephen Grant can come back later on? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I would be remiss to think that they wouldn't involve them in some way uh, in this series later on down the road. But, you know, so far we haven't even seen them or heard from them. Now, I gotta say the real standout of this series has easily easily, easily been the absolutely beautiful artwork. I am blown away by every single panel and page, you know, and a little interesting aspect of the art is that Moon Knight is actually not colored in. They actually just drew the outline of him, left him blank, and then painted and colored in everything around him. So he really just pops off that page in that stark white contrast. To definitely check out this Moon Knight run, this is the first volume of the current series, so it is the perfect perfect jumping in point if you want to get to know Moon Knight a little bit better. If you can buy a copy down at the link below from gtxcomics.com. But yeah, have you read this series? Are you planning on picking it up? Let me know down in the comments. I would love for a chance to connect with you and talk a little Moon Knight. And as always, G.I. Joel Nation, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future updates or episodes.